Welcome everybody uh, to the uh, seventh session of Fundamentals of Research in Medicine with Professor Abu Zidan. Professor, welcome again. Uh, welcome, Today Arif. we will discuss about uh, the, the planning animal, experimental or clinical research for medical students. And we want to hear from your, your experience and of course your recommendations to them. Particularly similarities, uh, differences, advantages, uh, about these studies. Could you please, you know, share your experiences? Yes, uh, Arif. I mean, I like uh, to start for the students that now uh, they hear a lot about this uh, one globe, one health approach. So what does that mean? And what's the relevance of this to what we discuss, animal experiments, human experiments? And this approach means that we are living in one world, which consists of humans, animals, and the environment. So if we say let's say clinical or patient, for me a patient is a human, but for the veterinarian doctor, the patient is the is an animal. And interestingly, for example, we studied the collagen with kangaroos. So is the kangaroo the victim or the cause of injury? And of course, it depends which angle you look at. Now, in general, if you use the word uh, term experimental. Experimental can also be in human, which is testing something, putting a theory and then trying to experiment by two limbs, by a specific drug against another drug. That's an experiment, but it's done actually in humans. So I would like to simplify the terminology like animal and clinical. Clinical for me means human. They are almost the same, Harif. Uh, the issue is that uh, now there is another terminology which people uh, always listen about it, which is translational medicine. And what's that? The best research I find personally is that you work in the clinical scenario, and from there a question comes to you, like, for example, the principle of damage control surgery and trauma. Then you ask yourself, does it work? What are the physiological variables? How does it work? And then you try to take it to an animal model. And what's the advantage there is that in the animal model, you use standardized controlled condition. Look at that. That's very important terminology. Standardized because, you know, sometimes humans vary a lot. Age variance. You have children, you have 17, 90 years old. So there is a lot of wide variance, variation in the age. There is variation in the weight. There is variation of habits. You, you have a group of patients who have actually uh, uh, smoking, others not smoking. You have variation in the pre-existing condition. Does the patient have uh, hypertension or diabetes? In animals, you try to remove all of these except the variable which you are studying. Now, this may not have a generalizability, but it can specifically answer a specific question about a specific factor. <clears throat> so, for example, in animals, we use a specific age of animals, a specific weight of animals, even sometimes a specific gender of animals, depending on what we do. And we try to use an animal which really mimics the real scenario of the patient. For example, we know the uh, inflammatory response of sheep to sepsis is similar to humans. We know that some animals uh, can work, for example, in specific models better than others. And you have different animals. You have small animals, you have large animals, and you have to know exactly what's the physiology of these animals and understand them well before you apply them as a model. Now, once you decide your model, uh, the, the difference is that, of course, if you remove all this variation, the sample size will be much s smaller. So uh, large animal experiments, usually, you need 10 subjects. In humans, sometimes you need 500 in each limb, or in big cohort studies, you need thousands. <laughs> so the advantage of the animals is that, animal studies, is that the procedure itself or the intervention or the experiment can be short, especially the lifespan of animals are short. 
Uh, sometimes they are long, like for example, studying atherosclerosis in pigs by specific food. Maybe you follow them up to, to one year. Now, to do an experiment, you have to prepare for it. I mean, for example, putting a catheter in the carotid artery of, uh, of the rat needs a specific, specific catheter. Making a tracheostomy for a rat needs a specific size of a catheter to, to work properly. Now, I really advise the students, if they have an experimental setup, animal setup, in, the hosp in, the, in their university or, or wherever they are, to join that. Why? Because they can learn the whole process in the experiment within a short time. They can learn the planning, they can plan the design, they can plan the data collection, they can learn the, 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 the planning procedure. And the interesting thing is the writing process of an experimental study is exactly the same as the clinical study. So if they really, they can really get the, the exposure to research quickly, and they will understand the principles properly before they go to the clinical setting, which is more complex. In the, in the clinical setting, a lot of variation because there's a lot of distractors. You will have clinical responsibilities. You may have teaching responsibilities. You may have people who really don't want to be involved in this. And so there's a lot of logistics. Now, the labs are closed rooms or closed environment that tries to give you the answers in a much easier, easier way, but the generalizability, the use of this information in humans is the most important one. So I, I mean, this is the similarities and differences between them, Arif, and I personally advise people initially to be involved in experimental work if they want, and then that would increase their research abilities much more than really uh, being in big clinical studies. And the other thing is that the best encouragement for research is to have success. And that's why I don't really, I love to start easy with the students because success brings success, while failures may actually uh, disappoint people and then they can leave the, the, the research process completely. And they may be discouraged, yeah. They can be discouraged, yeah. okay? Okay, Prof. Uh, the, the one more question I want to ask you about the animal research, because you are now in more in the clinical research area, but you did a lot of, uh, you have a lot of experiences actually in the animal models and uh, animal research. The, what are the difficulties to working with animals? What do you recommend to the students? I mean, of course, the, the kind of the students, uh, the, they need really to work with someone. I, I, I don't encourage the students to bring animals to do experiments because there's a lot of ethics on that. So, but uh, they can go under, we, we speak, they need a mentor. And uh, uh, building up an animal model, Arif, is really difficult because it has three stages. People cannot appreciate that. They just want to apply directly. The first stage is to establish a model by mimicking other models. The second stage is to refine the model. And the third stage is to apply the technique or the procedure on the model, which you read to work within established groups. This is my advice. And they usually say that a dwarf can see much higher when he sits on the shoulders of a giant. I mean, I, I, I like to stress that it's very important for research to have a mentor. You will be a mirror of whom you choose to be your mentor. So uh, I advise them to join groups. If not, they can still do research in their sitting, which is useful, as we discussed before. Uh, so it's not either you go into very advanced experimental work. Of course, there is, there is laboratory work. And we go to the principle, the whole or the, or the part, which means some people do experiments on uh, cells. And there are principles of animal work that they have to know, which is great ethics. We stress that, very important. And the three ethics of animal research is the RRR, which is reduce, refine, replace. So they may work with cells, of course. They may work with uh, histopathological procedures. So research is a very wide thing, Arif. And uh, we, we can speak about working with cells. There are a lot of research people just have a specific type of a cell uh, line that they work all their life with. <clears throat> but we are speaking now about students who are interested really to join 
and they can easily join a laboratory with someone who's experienced in an area they are interested in, actually. Uh, and alternatively, if they don't have that in their university, they can join uh, people who are expert or who are really enthusiastic in clinical research. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for